Good afternoon to all viewers. I'm Aditya Singh Rathore, a PhD student at University at Buffalo. Today, it is my pleasure to present the paper, Sonic Print, a generally adoptable and secure fingerprint biometrics in smart devices. Biometrics have become a revolutionary security mechanism. It can recognize a human face, voice, iris, and even the fingerprint to identify the users. However, there still remain several concerns revolving around the biometrics. For instance, there are privacy issues in the face ID, limited robustness in the voice, and low degree of freedom in the iris. This has led the fingerprint technology to become highly socially acceptable. Fingerprint has currently been employed in billions of smart devices and IoT platforms to scan the user's input to predefine template and grant access to the smart device. Over a decade of development, fingerprint has evolved from optical capacitive to ultrasonic based detection in order to meet the consumer demand. This has also been done to make the fingerprint mechanism less complex and more intuitive and usable. Another reason for this enhancement would be the space requirements in the current systems. However, this issue still remains unsolved as the currently IoT and variables, which are miniature in sizes, cannot yet be supported by any biometrics, including the fingerprint. This has also been due to their unique surfaces, such as curved smart device, which are typically not adoptable by traditional cameras on fingerprint scanners. Another issue that has not yet been resolved is the fingerprint vulnerability. The current fingerprint spoofing has become an arms race between the attacker and the defender, and it continued to decrease the trust of people in the biometric technologies. Thus, we ask a very primary question. Even if the fingerprint is externally visible, can we still ensure that it cannot be compromised? Our vision considers several different smart devices across different domains and a user who uses his finger in order to interact with each of these smart devices. The interaction is in the form of swipe action from which a unique signal is generated that contains some intrinsic information about the user's fingerprint. We imagine that this information can be used for user identification. Also, it would be ideal if this cannot be compromised by the traditional attackers. To examine the origin of this unique signal, we look closely towards the interaction between the user's fingertip and the smartphone surface. When the fingerprint present on the epidermis layer of human skin interacts with the material texture, a sonic wave is generated due to the loss of kinetic energy from friction. This concept, which we call fingerprint excited sonic effect, an acronym FICE, can be recorded by a conventional microphone. To summarize, the dependency of the FICE on user's fingerprint and its characteristics of low audibility and surface independency makes it unique, secure, and accessible compared to the other biometric traits. If we would compare our technology FICE to previous biometrics, it would be most similar to voice technology where both the physiological and behavioral phenomena aggregate together to provide a unique human trait. To prove the visibility of the FICE in biometric applications, we recruit three subjects. We ask each of these subjects to perform swipe action on the back of the Google Pixel 2 smartphone and use the inbuilt microphone in the device to record the FICE signals. The time series representation of different FICE signals recorded vary among the subjects. In the previous studies of fingerprint biometrics, researchers have classified the fingerprint textures into three levels, where the level one features depend on the visual perception of humans. They can be differentiated into arc, loop, and whole structures as shown in the image. Similarly, we imagine that the FICE dependency in the audio domain should be derived from features which are dependent on its acoustic perception of humans, such as pitch and loudness. We extract a sequence of these features from every sample recorded during our feasibility study. From our analysis, we identified that a unique fingerprint pattern generates a unique FICE. 
we also confirmed that the uniqueness is based on the fingerprint difference between the subjects rather than the overall structure of their finger. Lastly, we also verify that the human dynamics such as the pressure or the speed during the swipe action has limited effects on the identification of FICE. Based on these promising results from our feasibility study, we imagine a, prom a good future of FICE in the biometric technology. However, how can we further refine its performance and robustness to suit the real world scenario? If we consider the user perspective of traditional fingerprint scanners, it requires training on diverse samples in terms of rotation and placement. While the fingerprint technology can recognize the users in one second, its performance is often impacted by moisture or other placement errors. For our approach, we imagine a user to simply download the software-based application from the Google Cloud or Apple Store. Next, during the training process, we ask the users to swipe 60 times on their smartphone surface. The number of times is based on the current capability of this, our system, which can be improved in the future. During the testing, we ask the same subject to swipe one to three times to unlock their smartphone. Going by this perspective, we built our end-to-end -end biometric system called SonicPrint, which recognizes the files from interaction between the human fingertip and the smart device surface in order to identify the users. Our system can recognize the users in an approximate one second duration. Also, we offer three benefits such as high degree of freedom, low computational resources, and low power consumption. We now look at four more primary modules of our system in closer detail. Our first module, background isolation, has the objective to remove the unwanted noise in the original signal. However, this noise is prevalent in the time series, making it hard to identify the target signal. However, we can identify the FICE recordings in the frequency domain. To remove these unwanted background noise, which typically arises from human voice or music, we first employ a high-pass filter in, with the range of 2.2 kilohertz to 22 kilohertz. Next, we employ a multi-band subtle subtraction approach to further denoise the signal and remove the additive noise without introducing any distortions. Lastly, we also employ a wavelet denoising approach to remove the residual clutters that is present in between the two different target FICE signals. Further de details about these approaches can be found in the paper. After denoising, we observe a very clean FICE signals. However, there is two noise elements such as tap from finger touching the smart device and drag which is finger slipping the surface that may still present in the overall signal. To identify the starting and ending position of the FICE, we employ a hidden marker model whose thresholds are optimized based on the roughness of the human fingertip. While the FICE is currently identified, we employ a phase-based detection module to detect the tap and the drag noise. Lastly, we ensure that our duration of the target signal lies between a range of 0.1 to 0.3 seconds. If this condition is met, the signal is classified as a sonic response and is fed to the feature detection module. We design a taxonomy which finds the appropriate features by looking at the fingerprint features ac across different levels. For instance, in our feasibility study, we saw that the relation between the human perception of usual fingerprint and audio FICE. For our level two features, we have chosen uh, features such as MFCC, linear prediction septal coefficient, and Rasta LPP to determine the uniqueness of FICE. Lastly, we also chose level three features to concentrate more on the anti-spoofing perspective so that an attacker cannot easily replicate this from using synthetic approaches. We feed these 128 features to an ensemble classification model, which is combined 
from different and widely used classifiers such as logistic regression, support vector machine, random forest, linear discriminant analysis, and Gaussian mixture models. Each of these classifiers have been assigned a particular weight and there's a voting that happens between them to classify whether the files belong to the authorized user or the unauthorized attacker. To determine the potential of our sonic print system, we conduct a pilot study. We ask several users to swipe both on the back and the front of the Google Pixel 2 smartphone at different locations. Based on the location, the smartphone surface may change from a glass to aluminum and the sensing distance might vary from 1, 7 and 11 centimeters to the convent inbuilt microphone. We recruit a total of 13 su 31 subjects across an age of 18 to 50 years. During the uh, swipe actions, we ask each of the subjects to do a natural swipe without restricting their pressure or speed. This was done to make sure that our five pilot study resembles close to a real world scenario. We first evaluate the accuracy and reliability of our results. As we can see, our system achieves a 92% accuracy, more specifically balanced accuracy and F-score for both the one hand and two hand action types. It is important to note that our system performance only suffers by a 2% reduction even after reducing the training samples by 60%. Our study leads us to a few interesting insights. For example, a closer pro proximity with the microphone, which is present in the two-hand action types, lead to a high SNR. Two-hand swipes are also observed to be more controlled and likable by the users. Finally, a rich textual surface also facilitates a strong coupling between the human fingertip and the device texture. In order to confirm the credibility of our insights, we again asked the same 31 participant to swipe on the leather surface in the smart, which is also present on the smartphone cover. Suddenly we observed that our balanced accuracy increases to 98.3%. To ensure that Sonic Print can also identify the unauthorized users, we train our model on 15 subjects and test it on 16 subjects which are not included in the training process. Even increasing the unknown fingerprints to 15, we observed only a 2% false positive rate, which is far better than some of the previous biometric technologies. To gain further insights, we also gradually increased the number of subjects during our evaluation. We found that for a lower number of subjects up till 10, we have a very good per performance, which would be ideal for home security and personal device application. However, if Sonic Print is meant to be employed for public use, such as monetary transaction or airport security, it still requires further exploration. We also wanted to examine the inclusiveness of Sonic Print. In order to do this, we identify four attributes, such as interactive surface, fingerprint characteristics, swipe action, and environment, which vary during the real world deployment. For instance, to identify the impact of interacting surface, we ask the users to swipe on different materials such as aluminum, synthetic leather, gel, and plastic. We observe a high performance for high core structures such as synthetic leather or plastic, but a lower for gel and aluminum. This is because high texture also provides a strong coupling between the interacting players. To ensure that Sonic Print is adoptable across different tech smart devices, we ask the users to swipe on Google uh, mouse, Apple Watch, voice assistant, and headphones. While a high curvature with higher diameter can lead to a high EER, controlling the speed might improve our results. Still, the current results show that Sonic Print is well adopted in existing smart devices. We also found that Sonic Print is sensitive to partial fingerprints However, its performance is adversely affected by the mic moisture level, which is same as the fin current fingerprint scanners. We hope to explore this phenomenon in the future. Sonic Print can also provide flexibility to the users in their swipe action. 
as we can see from the graph, the performance increases as the complexity of the swipe action increases. This is because a highly complex gesture also elongates the duration of the sample, ensuring enough intrinsic information about the fingerprint. We imagine these soft characteristics can be further used to enhance the system performance. Sonic print ensures that the sensing location can vary from low to high. We still observe a good uh, accuracy. Beside the previous promising results, Sonic print faces one limitation. It requires diverse training samples, which are collected in both the noisy and controlled environments during the training process. In the future, we aim to look at the current researches in the acoustic noise cancelling domain to enhance our background isolation module. To answer the question about the vulnerability of sonic print, we imagine a scenario where an attacker recruits the help of a victim to fabricate his fake fingers. These fake fingers can be further used by the attacker to spoof the system. However, we observed a very low spoof rate of 4.2%, ensuring the high security of our model. Since the FICE belongs in the audio domain, we also examine its, the effect of replay attack. The spoof rate remains low to 3.2%. Finally, we conduct a side channel attack to examine if FICE can be replicated through a vibration medium. However, this attack still fails, ensuring that sonic print is a considerable secure technology. After the experiments, we also asked the 31 participants about their opinion on sonic print. Generally, participants were com comfortable and eager to use our technology in their daily life. For our future, we also envision some potential values that can be used to further improve our system. For example, we ask whether using more than one finger would improve our system performance or increase the non-linearity. We also ask if we can build a sonic-based engine to detect anything that a finger touches, or whether it is possible to develop a gesture-based approach from FICE. Thank you for listening to the presentation. Any questions?